we should differentiate between type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes, for example, we know that most of the diabetic patients have type 2 diabetes. Almost 90% of patients have type 2 diabetes, and it's multifactorial. The main risk factor is sedentary lifestyle and non-healthy diet. And we know, again, that also the uh, uh, hereditary, hereditary risk factor is, is existing, but it's not the main risk factor. So patients with uh, genetic tendency for diabetes could develop diabetes, but if they avoid consumption of a lot of carbohydrates, and if they uh, maintain exercises, they can deliver diabetes. For type 1 diabetes, we know that uh, the, uh, it's different disease, and uh, type 1 diabetes uh, uh, is caused by autoimmune disease that, uh, that cause destruction of beta cells in the pancreas. It's more common in, in families with other autoimmune diseases like Hashimoto thyroiditis, Graves disease, celiac disease, and the genetic tendency is very low in type 1, but still exists. And it's very important because if, uh, nowadays we have treatment for patients with uh, high glucose but without diabetes and positive autoantibodies and we can give them treatment that can delay or prevent for months or years the development of type 1 diabetes. So it's very important to know if the patient has risk factors and also slightly high glucose in order to give him these treatments that can delay the disease. Our goal is to diagnose the patient before he, he is coming symptomatic patient. Okay, so the, our recommendations for type 2 diabetes, for every adult above 10, uh, 18 years old, what BMI is just a marker of uh, overweight more than 25, and other risk factors for type 2 diabetes like family history of diabetes, polycystic kidney, hypertension, cigarette smoking, lifestyle, uh, sedentary lifestyle, all of these people should start making screening tests for diabetes starting at age of 18 years old. And if, if the blood glucose is normal, you should repeat it after every three years. If the people don't have any risk factors, they should start screening for diabetes at age of 35. And then every three years, if, they, if, the, if, the, if the values are normal. For type 1 diabetes, we don't have any screening program except people with family history of diabetes and uh, who can take the new medication that, that can delay the development of type 1 diabetes, then we perform blood uh, glucose test. Of, and if it's slightly high, we can perform autoantibodies to diagnose it, uh, stage 2 type 1. It's before type 1 diabetes and can give them the treatment that, that, that can prevent the disease. About symptoms, if the uh, patient doesn't have any blood test and just wait for the symptoms to be, to, to, to be existing. And that symptoms include uh, 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 bully urination, uh, it, that include the loss of weight, include uh, uh, the feeling of thirsty, uh, weakness, tiredness, and also tendency for uh, infections, uh, uh, mainly the genetic, genital infections in women. These are the symptoms, but again, we should not wait for these symptoms to uh, start. Other important thing, some type 1 diabetic patients, the, the first manifestation of disease could be very extreme situation, diabetic ketoacidosis. It's a very, very extreme thing. And uh, in this case, they feel abdominal pain, nausea, sometimes vomiting, with uh, difficulties in breathing. And these situations uh, need uh, hospitalization in order to diagnose DKA and treat these patients because otherwise it could be life-threatening. We know that uh, in 1922, the first person who prescribed insulin in the history. And uh, after that, we, we have only insulin for these patients. But nowadays, the technologies are, uh, uh, are very developed and uh, they reduce the burden of the disease from the patients. It started with the insulin pump, after that, the, ins the glucose sensor. And nowadays, we, no we have closed loop hybridic system like artificial pancreas, that there is a sensor that measures glucose all the time. And the, this data it, it, is it transformed to the pump that uh, infuses insulin. And the, this pump is very smart, very smart pump that takes the data and, uh, uh, and decide how much insulin all the time give the patient. And by this algorithm, 
the pump keep the glucose in the normal or the target range without very high glucose and also without a lot of events of hypoglycemia. The one thing that the patient should do in this technique, just to tell the pump that he wants to eat and how much uh, grams of carbohydrates he wants to eat in order to prepare the pump to give him enough uh, insulin for the, uh, for the meal itself. Otherwise, the, the pump make all the work and the patient can be relaxed from the point of view of hypoglycemia and uh, deal with his life uh, without the stress of the burden of hypoglycemia or severe hypoglycemia. Maybe I will disappoint the patients that nowadays we can't cure type 1 diabetes. But we hopefully can do that in the next years, maybe, because we know that there is a lot of uh, research about engineer, engineering beta cells of the pancreas that secrete the insulin. The, the barrier that the immune system also destroy the inserted beta cells in the body, but there are techniques nowadays that can overcome this uh, destruction of, the, of these beta cells by the immune system. So in the future, I think we can uh, provide these patients the new technique of engineered beta cells that are uh, transplanted in, in their bodies and can work like pancreas. Uh, it was tested before, but uh, it was effective only for a few months, sometimes one year, two, two years. So it's not uh, available right now for the patients because it's not enough. But uh, in the next years, I think it will be uh, more effective and more durable for long duration. And we can maybe cure type 1 diabetes. We have a lot of things to speak about type 2 diabetes because there are a lot of medications and new medications for type 2 diabetes. But I want to emphasize type 2 diabetes is not just hyperglycemia, it's not just high glucose. Type 2 diabetes goes with obesity, with fatty liver, with the high risk for cardiovascular disease and renal disease. And nowadays we have a lot of medications that are effective for control blood glucose and also protect the kidney, protect heart and protect liver. And nowadays we have maybe two main uh, new groups for uh, controlling diabetes and also protecting the other important uh, organs like SG inhibitors are uh, pills that cause the, uh, the glucose to be uh, extracted from the body by, by the urine and by that balance the glucose, but also it uh, protects heart failure and also prevent the, uh, uh, the chronic kidney disease impairment. And other medications, GLB-1 receptor analog, these medications are uh, subcutaneous injectable medications that we give the patients once weekly. There is also one new medication that is oral uh, GLB-1, and these medications are the most effective treatment for reducing glucose without causing hypoglycemia. They are also protect the heart from atherosclerotic heart disease and also prevent fatty liver. So it's very, very good uh, medication that uh, cover a lot of spectrum of the diseases that, uh, that accompanies patients with type 2 diabetes. And we know that some of these medications are so effective in reducing weight and now they are approved for patients with obesity, even without diabetes. Like we go, for example, that reduce weight by 15%. And there is a new medication, Monjaro. It's just uh, in, lim in limited distribution in the world right, uh, right now. But I think it will be in every country in the next three uh, months. And it reduces the weight by about uh, uh, 22, 25 percent. So in some cases, it can replace even bariatric surgery for some patients. So there are a lot of things that uh, patients can dream about. And these medications are very, very effective for these patients. In the future, we know that will be a new medication, new molecules that will be more effective in glucose controlling and more effective in weight reduction and also for uh, protecting other uh, organs like liver again, kidney and heart. So we have a lot of medication that can keep the life of diabetic patients very, very well controlled without the complications of the disease.